The Multi Plus pairs very well with Battleborn's lithium batteries. But you do have to program the Multi Plus to get all the benefits out of your lithium batteries and for the two systems to work well. So this is how you program your Multi Plus inverter. So first, take off the bottom cover. There's two screws on each side and this cover is removed. You want to disconnect any Ethernet cords that may be connected, you just want to talk to the MultiPlus by itself. So I'm going to have a separate Ethernet cord, and that plugs into either of the VE bus Ethernet ports. So I connected it to one right there. Then, to convert it to talk with a computer, we use the VE bus to USB. This is the Mark III USB. So that connects. Then here, we simply connect to a USB port on a computer. And we're going to open Victron Connect to be able to talk with the MultiPlus and program all of the proper settings so that these batteries get charged perfectly. So now we're going to head to the boat and we'll show you the actual programming steps. So welcome aboard Acadia. So we are going to continue where we left off. Just a moment ago, I showed you how to connect to the Victron MultiPlus. I'm connected now. It is beneath my seat, and the Ethernet connects into the VE Direct port. I have the MK3 to USB connected to the laptop. So now we're ready to program the Victron MultiPlus 2. So I open up Victron Connect. We're now on the home page for Victron Connect, and I see three different pieces of hardware uh, populating. We're interested in the Multi Plus 2, so I'm going to select this hardware. It's connecting to the Multi Plus. Okay, we are on the home page for the Multi Plus 2. So we see it's currently on. We have AC power coming in. It's recognized in the batteries. They are in a float state of charge right now. So we're gonna go ahead and begin adjusting the settings. So you go to the gear icon, you have to enable settings. So now it's prompting us for a password. It's best to contact your Victron dealer to get the password to go in for these settings. In this case, Battleborn provided us the password to use now. So we're going to enter that and begin adjusting the parameters. So as you can see, there are a lot of settings in this menu. We're only going to adjust a couple of them to get the MultiPlus to work well with these Battleborn batteries. But your setup might vary. So when in doubt, always contact your dealer for technical support. Keep in mind, if you do buy your Victron hardware from Battleborn, this will all come pre-programmed for you. So we go into the first tab under General, System Frequency. We're in North America. This is the frequency of mains power is 60 hertz. We have a current limit currently enabled, which is 7 amps, and that just protects us from overloading the generator. But I have it selected that I can overrule that on the remote, so I can adjust that if I'm not running other things and working the generator hard. The dynamic current limit is another setting when you have a small amount of generator output power available. If you had some other hardware, such as an external current sensor or a second battery monitor connected to the Victron, you would toggle these on here. So going under the grid tab, we currently have it toggled on to accept a wide input frequency range. It's not that necessary because the grid power is quite stable, but it doesn't hurt to have that on. The UPS function is something you want to be careful because it actually stresses the inverter charger. UPS means uninterrupted power supply. And if you have critical electronics, you'll want to turn that on. But it, if you don't need it, it's best not to toggle that on. Then we have certain disconnect and reconnect voltages. So if the grid 
power, the grid voltage goes too low, below 90 volts, the input will cut off and it'll reconnect at 100 volts. And then same thing if the grid power goes too high, it'll disconnect at 140 volts and reconnect at 135 volts. Next, under the inverter tab, so we are outputting 120 volts. The ground relay you want on. This is a setting to connect the output ground of your AC power to the input ground, and you do that when you're on shore power. The DC input low sh voltage shutdown. This should be set at 11 and a half volts. This is when the, the charge gets to that point, the inverter will stop drawing power. The input low voltage restart, when the voltage goes above a certain point, 12 and a half volts, the inverter will reconnect. And we have a DC input low voltage alarm. So if we get down to 12 volts, an alarm will go off to indicate the voltage is getting low. We have a low state of charge shutdown option. This is disabled currently. And here, this option, AES, is the automatic energy savings option. That is a feature that can save power by turning off the output of the inverter when you go below a certain load. I don't like that setting, so I leave that off because I have many loads that are quite small that I like to run constantly. The power assist feature is a feature where you can draw power from the batteries to assist in starting large appliances when you don't want to stress the generator too much. So you use a little bit of power from the batteries to help get those hard loads underway and everything running properly. Under the charger tab, we have the charger enabled so that way when we have shore power, we are putting power back in the batteries. The charge current is at 120 amps because that's the capability of the Multi Plus 2. The absorption voltage needs to be between 14.4 and 14.6 volts for Battleborn's batteries. Currently we're set to 14.4. The float voltage needs to be set between 13.4 and 13.8, so we're currently set at 13.4. The repeated absorption interval is the so the charger, when it's plugged in to shore power for long periods, it will return and re, uh, top off the batteries. And so every seven days, it'll increase the voltage and recharge the batteries, which is good, so that way all of the cells stay balanced. So the absorption time, that is recommended to be set between 0.2 and 0.5 hours for every 100 amp hours of battery capacity. In this case, I have 500 amp hours of capacity, so I'm gonna set this to about two hours. The low temperature cutoff, that stops the charger from charging the batteries below a certain point, but since the batteries have a BMS, I'm gonna leave that option disabled for now. A very important selection is the lithium batteries tab. Make sure that is on, it's gonna stop any voltage change based upon temperature, which you do not want for lithium batteries. So we see the charge curve is fixed as a result of that. The next two options are disabled because we have the lithium battery selection selected. If you have problems with your AC input, you can adjust the weak AC input selection. And then the final safety setting, stop after excessive bulk charging. If you keep throwing lots of power at the batteries and it's not finishing the charge, this will recognize that and stop charging. So finally, under AC input control, I don't have any of these selections selected. For my instance, I don't need it, but it can depend if you have certain power inlet requirements, you can adjust these settings. So now all of these settings have been adjusted. We're gonna push these settings to the inverter. We do that by hitting reset now, and it's gonna cut off the output power as it resets itself. It's gonna disconnect and reconnect now. Sounds like it's back reconnected. We're gonna open Victron Connect again.
So great, I can hear the charger charging again. MultiPlus is back on. I can select it. We're back in bulk charge because it's restarted itself. It needs to try and bring the batteries up. They happen to be full, but it's gonna try and charge them again anyway. But that's it, those are the settings you need to adjust for your Battleborn batteries. But once again, this programming is pretty advanced. So if you have any questions or need help during this process, you can contact Battleborn's technical specialist for assistance. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to the team at Battleborn Batteries. And in the meantime, I hope you consider supporting Warrior Sailing.